Good morning. Somehow it is Friday again. I received several enthusiastic responses to last week's video about rejection. And I realized, well, of course there's always more to say, um, but one person messaged me about this knee-jerk practice that we we tend to have of seeing someone's success as our failure, our re a re a rejection of, of ourselves and our work. And so I want to, this is a quick quote because it was a tweet, um, one of my all-time favorite tweets that I used as an epigram in, epigraph. <laughs> in Life Without Envy, cannot find the finished copy somehow. It's wandered off someplace. Don't let anyone tell you, ever, that this is a zero sum game. Your genius does not threaten me. It delights and inspires me. That is a tweet by the novelist Shannon McGuire. So let's say that Someone you know, this could be um, a classmate from your MFA or your critique group, or it could be um, you know, someone else who's writing books on similar themes. Uh, it could be a really good friend. Say that this person achieves something that you have held that's been one of your dearest ambitions, right? So you are feeling pinchy. You're feeling emotionally pinched. Possibly you have even been able to articulate your feelings of resentment to yourself. You understand what you're feeling. You have work to do and it is not the work of writing your next book. Uh, and I say this with all the love in my heart because I was there, I felt that resentment and I at some point recognized that I had the inner work, the personal growth work that I needed to do. So I have two questions for you. If you have ever felt yourself in this situation of comparison gaming, <clears throat> what are your needs underneath this yearning for recognition? That's number one. So sit with that question for, you know, not just one journaling session, but you know, you're gonna do this over a period of weeks, months, and years. Keep asking yourself that question. Secondly, how can you fulfill those needs? How can you give yourself what you most need? with zero regard for your external circumstances. So once you begin to answer those questions on paper, and then you begin to live the life that you've, you may have been not looking at, maybe even ignoring all of the possibilities, because you've been so fixated on this one this one right outcome, this one perfect outcome. And frankly, you may have been living by the script, right? This cultural script that tells us, this is what it means to be a successful artist. This is what it means to be a successful writer. This is what it means to be a successful human. Once you ditch the script, then see who you are on the other side. So, I, and so now I also wanna talk about this concept of deservingness, right? because I, I saw uh, just yesterday, I think, um, a young adult author, and I believe this was their first book, um, hit the New York Times bestseller list, and she took a selfie of herself um, saying, you know, this is what a New York Times bestselling author looks like. And all of, you know, I'm sure some friends, some random well-wishers, you know, said, so many people were saying, you deserve this you know, this is fantastic, congratulations, you deserve this. And the funny thing about deservingness is that, you know, unless we're talking about, you know, these fundamental 
rights, things that should be rights, you know, that everyone um, deserves to be safe, everyone deserves enough food in their bellies, everyone deserves to feel love and support and to be treated with dignity. Yeah, every, all of us, all sentient beings, I believe, deserve those things. So we're not talking about that kind of deservingness. We're talking about deservingness in this context of professional recognition. It is entirely subjective. And so I can look at someone who hits the New York Times bestseller list with their first book and I can say, well, I, I, I've been at this for 20 years. I deserve it more than they do. Do I? That's not a productive, that's not a productive thought to have, right? And, you know, therein lies the path of um, you know, resentment and begrudgery. I uh, actually wrote a piece on Medium back when Life Without Envy came out, uh, and I called it bile and begrudgery because I, I've seen what these thoughts do to people when they don't actually stop and examine the thought and choose to think a kinder, more productive thought. I've seen the, what this does to people. You don't want to be one of those people. And so when you catch yourself thinking, I deserve this more than someone else does, or I, um, you know, seeing your, your, someone else's success as having taken something away from you, that, as I've been saying all along, that is an invitation. An invitation to, to growth and to the, the life that, the life that you could be living on the other side of all of these pinchy feelings, which, you know, as I say, it's not your fault that you feel this way. You, we've all been, we've all been programmed by the culture, right? We've, we've all had to, to manage these feelings that we're basically told that we should be feeling frustrated and upset and resentful and you don't have to feel that way. It is something that you can work past and you can feel a sense of creative fulfillment no matter what, you know, your, your best friend just got a film deal or whatever it is, um, you know, I was thinking about this in particular because I, I feel that I am perhaps uniquely positioned right now because I'm on this weird, I'm kind of teetering in this weird place where half of the people out there, if they think of me at all, are like, oh, you know, that person, you know, published a bunch of books and, you know, more than half of them are out of print. Um, you know, this person is not a su successful writer. And then the other people are like, oh my gosh, she's, you know, this, this, cause this news dropped in case you missed it. Um, at the end of January, uh, this leak went out. I didn't even, I mean, I didn't know about it. You know, they don't, they, when you get a film option, they don't, they don't, they don't tell you anything, which is fine. Um, I'm working on what I'm working on now. And, uh, so s several years ago when my novel Bones and All first came out, um, I sold the film rights or the option. And so now the, now that it looks like the movie is actually going to happen. And so there are like huge names attached to this project, like huge, like, and you know, I, if this movie is greenlit, like I'm going to receive a life changing amount of money. So, but, but then I'm in this place where like, nobody seems to want my books right now. I mean, like I, I've said to you um, in previous Office Hours episodes that I've, actually received a bunch of rejections in recent years and you know my sales record is not very good you know by industry standards and so I'm in this this really interesting in-between place where someone can look at me and say um you know that does this person deserve this and I've, I've gotten messages saying that I from friends saying, oh, you deserve this, you deserve every good thing that happens to you because you've worked so hard. As I have said, there are many, many, many 
very talented authors who have worked very, very, very hard for a lot of years. And so to, to say that one person deserves it more than another, it's completely pointless because some, some authors, some artists will get the recognition that they deserve by whoever's metrics. And most of us will not. That's not why we do what we do. So the, the, the underlying, my underlying point here is that if you're feeling this way, it is likely because you're, you, you've hooked accomplishment to worth. So if you get this, then you will belong, then you will feel self-worth. And your, I've been meaning to do a YouTube video about this for a while, your worth on the day that you were born, 100, your worth on every day of your life, regardless of what you do or don't do or what does or does not happen to you, to you or for you, 100. So that's, that's the work, that's, that's the inner work, is finding your sense of worth regardless of what is or is not happening in your career, in your personal life, anything else. So it's a matter of recalibrating your ambition to align with all of the wonderful things that are for you in this lifetime. No one's sole purpose is to hit, S-O-U-L, is to hit the New York Times bestseller list. That is no one's sole purpose. You are here for something else and it is a magical, wondrous journey, being so corny, to, of, of lifelong journey of like figuring out what that is. Like what is your, um, Michael Heron introduced me to Maria Montessori's concept of the cosmic task, task, your cosmic, to get into cosmic alignment. That is what, that's what we're seeking here. That's ultimately what we're seeking. So I wanted to, I wanted to close with some words from my new favorite YouTuber who I recently discovered. His name is Kay Strauss. And he, um, his, his brand is called, his, and his book are Ecstatic Self. So this, I was listening to the audiobook of his new book um, on Audible this morning. So I'm just going to read, I'm just going to read you this quote because I was like, me too, me too, me too. My life is far more fulfilling than I ever imagined it could be, but it looks almost nothing like I dreamt it would be when I was younger. I have had to peel off layers of determined expectations to reveal my essence. I have to let go of who I thought I needed to be to let the real me shine through. And then the last, and I know, I know I've seen, I've seen this permutations of this quote and this sentiment around, um, and so I can't remember who I first heard this from, but, um, but Kay wrote this in his book and, um, and I love the way he put it. Fortunately for me, I did not get what I wanted. So I will leave you with that. Thank you so much for watching. There are, currently there are four of you watching. I am so happy to have you here. Thank you so much. If you have any any questions that I can answer in a future episode. Um, that the, plan, the original plan for this week was to talk about beta readers and how we can find um, our trusty beta readers. Some, um, some advice um, on that account. So I will, I may be talking about, probably we'll talk about that next week. Um, thank you. So, five, five. Um, so that's probably gonna be my topic for next week. Um, but please leave me a comment, send me a DM, let me know if you have any topics that you'd like me to riff on in a future Friday morning episode. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and heartening for you. Have a wonderful day, wonderful weekend, wonderful life, and I will see you, or rather you will see me <laughs> next Friday. Oh! Oh my gosh, again, I'm missing all of these messages. Thank you, thank, oh, thank you, Michelle. 
Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. This is great. Thank you. Ah, thank you.